Hello. I'm back today with another metal album review. But before I get started, there's a few points I'd like to mention briefly. Uh, point number one, happy Thanksgiving. Uh, I know it's Thanksgiving this weekend here in Canada and anywhere else that applies. You know, have a great weekend. Enjoy yourself. Enjoy a day off work. Have some turkey. Um, the other thing I'd like to mention is that uh, I didn't get to make a video last weekend, but I'm hoping to catch up this weekend. So uh, my apologies if you're following my channel here at all. Um, you will see more videos coming from this channel very soon, so, you know, hold, hold on to your hat. Um, today, I'll be reviewing a classic doom metal album, Anathema Serenades. Uh, surprise, there hasn't been more uh, coverage of this on YouTube whatsoever. It's an absolute classic. Uh, there's a few notable, notable points about this album in particular. The first thing I'd like to mention is that uh, this is the only full-length album to feature Darren White which was the uh, original vocalist for the, for uh, Anathema, who later went on to sing for The Blood Divine, and now uh, Serotonin as well. So it's kind of a unique album from that perspective. And also it falls between uh, two other great releases, The Crest Fallen and uh, Pentecost Three. <clears throat> now Anathema's always been a band that likes to change their, their sound, their style, uh, change around band members and so on. And this is absolutely, absolutely no exception to that that particular rule. Um, it does fall between the more classic Doom Death inspired Crestfall and then the more sort of progressive and atmospheric um, Pentecost Three. And you can tell that there's they're definitely making a change on this album. Def definitely experimenting with new uh, new sounds, new techniques, uh, new influences. And that's one thing that really sets us apart for me, at least as a classic album. Something that's memorable. Uh, highly listenable and very enjoyable altogether. Um, now, in terms of vocals, you actually get you know some influence of that classic doom death metal sound, uh, particularly on tracks like uh, "They Will Always Die," which is actually a throwback to the same song that was on the Crestfallen. So you will hear that you know deep guttural growl type tone on here. But there are other instances such as on uh, "Sleepless," which has been become sort of like a favorite from this particular album. They hear a lighter tone than that you may have not really heard on, uh, say, The Crossfallen or any of the earlier demos. So it's definitely a new element to bring to the table, and that uh, basically helps form their sound and influence their future releases like Pentecost 3 and uh, even Vincent Cavanaugh's work later on once Darren White had left the band. Now, in terms of the guitar work, you'll definitely hear that sludge, that, you know, that deep sludgy sound that you've heard on The Crossfallen and the earlier, earlier work of Anathema. But you also hear, you know, new guitar lines, um, more of the melodic stuff here, for example, on Sweet Tears, which has been, uh, you know, deemed as a fan favorite as well at this particular release. You can definitely hear the more flowing melodic passages, something they're experimenting with, and it definitely works very well in here. It adds a sort of new layer to the music. It makes it listenable, maybe a little bit more accessible, but... Uh, I wouldn't say they sold out or anything like that. This is, you know, definitely still classic Doom, Doom inspired release here. <clears throat> now, in terms of the bass and drumming, uh, I definitely wouldn't say this particular album is really heavy on featuring the bass and drum prominently. Uh, the bass does tend to fall sort of into the backdrop with the drumming, and although the drummer uh, keeps fairly simplistic vibes going, uh, there are definitely more aggressive points out here such as on uh, Love, Lorne, Rhapsody, for example, where the, the drummer kicks it up a notch in the, the more aggressive parts with more interesting fills and techniques. So you can tell the guy knows what he's doing. Uh, and even though maybe the songs weren't written to be very you know, drum-centric, uh, the drumming is very good on here. I have no complaints about that. This album actually does have quite good production as well. Uh, now, one thing I'd like to mention, though, as a small gripe here, is that sometimes I found that the spoken vocals were a little too low in the mix. But that's not a really huge deal, and the fact that the bass kind of blends in with the drumming, you know, welcome to metal, that's just the way things work out a lot of the time. So all in all, the production on here, there's nothing to really complain about, and it's quite listenable all the way through. <clears throat> Except for maybe the final track here, which I'll mention in a little while. Now, as I mentioned, sort of the favorite tracks that people tend to remember from here are, you know, Sleepless, Sweet Tears, uh, They Will Always Die, um, but one of my favorite tracks on here that's sort of a sleeper hit for me is Sleep Insanity. This is a great example of them blending the old and new 
together into one nice little package. Uh, you can hear the flowing melodic guitar guitar tones. You can hear the classic sludgy doom. It's all sort of blended together and uh, made in a new way. And this sort of style definitely influenced Pentecost Three, and definitely influenced uh, Vincent Cavanaugh's work on Save the Silent Enigma and other albums following that. The main grape I have here, uh, in terms of song titles here and you know the different song writing techniques, is a uh, very dominant on Dreaming the Romance. Uh, it's definitely not a song that I can really particularly enjoy, uh, mostly because it's 23 minutes long and it doesn't really go anywhere. So, for me, that's a track that you know has some nice, nice ideas in it, but it really didn't seem to come together and it didn't change much over that 23 minute span. Very, you know, atmospheric, uh, no guitar, no vocals. It's just like a flowing passage that never really ends or seems to really go anywhere. So. If there's anything to avoid on this particular album, uh, skip Dreaming the Romance, which is not even available in all the all the versions of this because it's sort of a bonus track. Now, the other things you get in terms of bonus tracks here are uh, Eternal Rise of the Sun and Nailed to the Cross slash 666. Uh, if you've listened to, I believe it was The Crestfallen, 666 can actually be heard as a uh, sort of bonus track on the end of that, at least on the Pentecost 3 slash Crestfallen release. And uh, it's cool that they brought it back. It's actually a sort of inclusion from a previous release called uh, We Are the Bible, I believe, from Anathema. And it's kind of cool that they included it here because that would be not available in this day and age. And same goes for Eternal Rise of the Sun. Uh, it, it has one of the more melodic vibes in here, similar to other sort of more interlude tracks, such as, you know, Scars of the Old Stream and Where Shadows Dance. Uh, but it's a great inclusion. It fits in well with the rest of the material, and I don't have any complaints about it. So all in all, to make a long story short, um, this is a very underrated album, I think. It's a great listen. It flows really well. All the tracks are enjoyable, possibly excluding Dreaming the Romance. And it's just a, a fun and really great, you know, doom metal album to listen to. It's uh, genuine. It's emotional. It's uh, heavy and it's melodic all at the same time. Uh, that's really all I have to say about it. I check out Anathema, a very classic uh, doom death metal band, at least in the early days. And this is definitely an album that shows the band's, the band's transition over the years, and it definitely influenced their following releases, and even the music up to this, this day and age, even though it's you know changed significantly over the last 10 or so years. Um, thanks a lot for watching, and uh, have a good one. Happy Thanksgiving. <laughs>